Okay, so I'm at a Power and Love conference, and, and these ladies come up to me, and they're like, listen, we want you, we want you to go out, out somewhere with us today. And this was like a very small conference. We had a couple of people. Like, we want you to go to lunch with us today, but our friend is petrified, and she doesn't want to go. And if she does, you have to promise me, promise her that you don't push her. I'm like, man, I said, who is she? So they part and move away, and she's, she's, she's trembling, dude. I mean, she's shaking. She doesn't know what to say. I said to her, I said, honey, why are you so afraid? Because you're like a pit bull and I'm like a cat on the table. That's why. <laughs> and I said, come on. And she comes from a background where this is completely weird. Like God does not flow through people. He does not heal people. He is not. And, and she's taught that this is like not good. And I'm like, man. I said, honey, I said, I would love to go out. And I promise I won't push you. But if, but if I go out, these two can't go. Only you. Because I need to talk to you. And you don't have to do any, I promise you don't have to do anything. Even if we just go and talk, that's fine. Because I need to talk to her. I need to pour who God says she is into her. So she's like, I am not going with you. I said, honey, we don't even have to go out of the parking lot. Okay? She's like, okay, but you promised me that you won't push me. I said, I promise I won't push you. And so right away, God speaks to me and he says, now that we had different places. We were in a town that every town was 20 miles away. So we're in the middle of nowhere. So the town that God highlighted to me was a town called Defiance. So I said, honey, I said, I know this is going to sound weird. Now this is after we get out of the building and we walk into the car. I said, we need to go to Defiance. She goes, I am not going to Defiance. And you think there's a lot in it with the name Defiance and stuff. Maybe there could be. I didn't see that. All I knew was that it was highlighted. So she said, I am not going there. So we ended up going and sitting in the car, and I'm talking to her. She's been through a lot of junk, man. A lot of stuff. She's been in church her whole life. She grew up a certain denomination that doesn't believe in any of this, but also that she grew up in a denomination that she didn't even really know what she believed, except she knew that one day, hopefully, she'd make it to heaven if she was a good person. So I said to her, I said, honey, I said, what, why don't we go towards that town? So she's like, I am not going towards that town. But she did. So we drove to a parking lot that was a mall parking lot. I said, look, there's a mall. It's a big parking lot. It's almost empty. Let's just go sit at the farthest part of the parking lot. So she says, and on the way there, she keeps telling me, she goes, listen, she goes, I can pray for animals all day long because I love animals. She's telling me about her life. I mean, she's really, and the reason why she can pray for animals is because they don't talk. <laughs> A lot of people don't mind praying for animals is because there's no dispute there. They don't have to deal with people. And people have elevated a love for animals above a love for people because they got hurt by people. And they have ministries to animals because they don't love people. That's demonic. Not loving people is demonic. Not loving animals. I mean, I love animals too. I got dogs. I love them. So we get in the parking lot, and we're talking. She's like, and she's boasting in her love for animals. I go, look, there's a pet store. So cool. She goes, yeah. I go, why don't we go in there? There's animals. So we go inside the pet store, and we walk in. She's like really cautious, dude. I mean, she's afraid, because there's people in there too. She's like back here walking, and like I'm at the pulpit, and she's like ignoring me, but not. She's listening, because she thinks that I'm gonna like go, hey, can I wanna pray for everybody, grab the microphone, and embarrass her. My friend, the one I told that I wouldn't throw her under the bus, is expecting me to throw her under the bus, so bus? So she's cautious. She's freaked out. And so I just, I didn't say anything to her. I acted like she wasn't there because I knew that's what she wanted me to do. So I went back to the back and I saw a mom and two kids 
And so they're looking at her dog being cut, the, the hair being cut off the dog. I got, uh, you know, dog trim. Barber, dog barber. Puppy trim. And I said to the mom, I said, wow, that's a beautiful dog. It was an awesome dog. And the kids were there, yeah, and they're telling me the name. I'm like, man, that's awesome. I looked at mom, I said, do you know how much God loves you? She said, oh, thank you. And the kids are like, looking at me kind of weird, because they don't have that in their house. So the mom looks at me, and I said, honey, I said, is there anything I could pray for you about? She goes, uh, money. I said, okay. I said, could I pray? She goes, sure. So I held my hand, closed my eyes. Sometimes people tell you, don't close your eyes. I figure if I get hit, I take one for the team. <laughs> Besides, I'd rather not see their face that's like, and see the kids. We have so many testimonies of me and Dan in airports and going up to pray for somebody. And I close my eyes and they're looking at Dan. They don't know he's with me. They're looking at Dan like, it doesn't matter. Jesus is awesome, man. And besides, I'm not looking at them to look at me any different way. It doesn't matter how they see me. I see how God sees me. And I live in that place. It's like a bubble where I'm in there with my father. Serious, when I, when I pray for somebody in public, it's like the whole world shuts off. I believe it's me, it's the scripture that says if I abide in him. I believe that's where I'm at. I'm in a place where I abide in him. Because you will suffer persecution. But if I'm in him, it's just affirmation that I'm living godly. Okay. So I pray for this lady. She's like, thank you so much. I really needed that. I'm like, awesome. So nice to meet you. Now this lady is like looking at stuff, but not really looking at stuff. She's just listening. She's like a fly on the wall. You ever hear that saying? Okay. So we walk down the next aisle and I see a lady that's on her cart leaning like this. She's actually putting stuff on the shelves. Am I okay? Am I all right? You guys okay? We're almost done. It never ends. No, because there's always testimonies. There's always life. It's always, it's constant, it's nonstop. There's testimonies every day about stuff. Every day. Every day. Your life is to be a testimony of His goodness. Of his display in your life. People around you get freaked out but come to know God. And people that don't know God come to know God because you know God. So we walked down another aisle and we see this lady leaned over. And I said, honey, I said, your back's hurting you, isn't it? Not because I had a word of knowledge, but because she's bent over on the cart. And the lady's closer to me now. At first she was further away. Now she's closer. She's listening. And I said, honey, your back's hurting you. She goes, yes, it is. I said, I saw you leaning on the cart. So the, the lady knew it was, wasn't like, it wasn't a word of knowledge. She knew that I just saw that she was bent over. And I said, can I pray for you? She goes, I would really like that. So the lady was kind of like, she would like that? That's weird. So I prayed for her, and she stood up. She goes, oh my God, it's gone. And the lady couldn't help it. She goes, is it really better? The one that was petrified when we walked, not even going to go out. Not even, definitely not going to defiance. Not even going to go sit anywhere near that place. But then a pet store. And truth, because I don't have anything to talk about but truth. So we're just dividing and, and shifting stuff and cutting away junk, just telling her who she really is. So all of a sudden this lady, she's like, is it really better? Yeah, it's really better. You're a Christian? The lady goes, so am I. I'm like, this is awesome. So we walk down to the end after that, and walk up, and we walk up to the end where the, where the uh, aquariums and stuff are, the snakes and all that stuff. I said, do you like fish? She goes, yeah. So we walk up there, and we see a lady there that's feeding fish and stuff. And, we, and I said, honey, is there anything that we could pray for you for? And the lady just kind of looked at her, kind of freaked out a little bit. She goes, well, you know what? This turtle... is really sick and has a respiratory I think she even said an upper respiratory I don't know any of that stuff she said has a respiratory infection and if he doesn't if he doesn't get better he's gonna die I've been praying for him all the time I'm like God you are like you are like way beyond anything that my brain can think like I think like this is God maybe if we go over here sometimes but God's like man 
Todd, I really am ahead of this. I'm not that he's not the head, but he's like way ahead of me. Which also me means that today, God has people that are already prepped for you to share with. See, we don't think that he's involved in this, that you've got to do all the work. No, that's a Martha. A Martha is saying, you've got to do all this for God. And Mary says, God, you love everybody. It's your will that all men be saved. And that word saved actually is sozo. Saved, healed, delivered, protected, made whole, kept safe and sound, to, do be, kept, to be kept safe from harm. So that word sozo, it's God's will that all men be saved, all men be delivered, all men be healed. We have to look at the definition of that word, the Greek definition of the, world, of the word. So it's God's will that all men get healed. All men be delivered. All men be saved and come to the knowledge of Him. That's God's will. So He is on your side. But God is the one that leads people to Him. You're not the one. You're a sower and a waterer. God brings the increase. But it's God's will for all people to come to know Him. So when you go out there, God wants them. Okay. So the lady goes, I'll pray for your turtle. I'm back out of the equation. <laughs> Not because I didn't want to pray, but because this woman now is going to go off, dude. And I listen to this girl. In the name of Jesus. I mean, she's loud. In the store. People hear her. A lady that's petrified. So she's praying, in the name of Jesus, I command these lungs to open over a turtle. Over a turtle. It's awesome. Dude, go to the pet store today. Go somewhere. Turtles need you. <laughs> this is fun. See, it's not so bad. It's not so hard. It's not. Training is intense, man. The teaching of the gospel is intense. But it's only so you could just step into being who God says you are. It's not hard to just be. It's hard to do. You don't have to perform for God. But you can't afford to have a basket on your head and be afraid. Man, this is why I talk about the finished work so much. Because it's the perfect love of God that casts out all fear. It's His perfect love for you. And it's all through Christ and Him crucified. But when this thing takes place in your heart and in your life, it's not about trying to sin and get away with it. Man, that's tragedy. When something happens, your heart convicts you. You immediately confess that to God. That was wrong, God. This is who you created me to be. Because that stuff's not fun anyway. Condemnation just is resident inside of people. They don't know how to get rid of it. But in Christ, there is no condemnation for those of you that live according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Your flesh will no longer have a voice in your life if your relationship with God's Spirit is the strength of your walk. And when the flesh, and when the flesh tries to whisper something, the strength of Spirit... See, Jesus told the disciples that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. He was telling them because they were not born again. He told them, guys, don't, don't fear. I will not leave you as an orphan. He says, I'm going to go away, but if I don't go away, he won't come. But if I go, when I go, he comes. And it's going to be better for you because the presence of me that walks with you is going to be far surpassed by the presence of me that's going to come live within you. This is what kills the fear thing so that we can walk in the faith thing. This is beautiful. I love it. So this lady's praying for the turtle. They're going off, both of them, just ah, taking turns, man, interceding for the turtle. And it, it was awesome. I looked at her and I said, that was awesome. She goes, yeah, amen. It was great. I was, I'm not making fun of her. I'm just telling you what God did. I, and I didn't say, breathe. They didn't, there wasn't any checking the turtle. I don't know. Tell us how you feel. Can you tell anything different? That's different. You can't. We walked down, and we saw another aisle, and we went in, and there was a lady there with her son and a dog. It was a, a chow. Chows aren't very nice dogs. But he's in the store, so obviously he's not trying to kill people. Do you know what a chow is? Okay, it's a big, fluffy dog that most of them that I've met are pretty angry. So I'm like, can I pay your dog? Because I don't have a spirit of fear. <laughs> 
can I pet your dog? She goes, sure. So I pet the dog. And then I, I have a word of knowledge. Now the lady is right with me. She's petting the dog. Oh, he's beautiful. And I said to the lady, I said, do you have a migraine headache? She goes, yes, it's terrible. And I said, honey, I said, can we pray for you? The lady looks at me. She's not scared anymore. It's awesome. It's awesome. See, the more you walk this out in front of people, the more you give people the absence of fear. Because they see you and you plow the way and you endure the suffering for the sake of God's elect. <laughs> it's like David. When all the armies were petrified, David shows up. He knows God. Grabs a stone, drops the giant, and the army that was petrified runs and kills all the Philistines. Because somebody plowed, somebody stepped up, somebody grabbed a stone, that was Christ. The air was the Holy Spirit. Sunk the giant, chopped his head off, lifted it up, and the body of Christ said, let's go. It's really good. So we prayed for this lady, but in the meantime, when we asked her to pray, she knelt down, and I grabbed her son, I said, will you help me pray? They're Christians. Like, at one time. So he puts his hand on his mom's head, and we commanded to leave. The mom is bawling, I mean, losing it. Her headache goes away. The son said, thank you for helping my mom. Oh, it was amazing, like an eight-year-old kid. So the lady is so weeping, this lady that was with me, so weeping and crying. She hugs the mom and says, thank God. Thank God we came in here today, huh? It's crazy. It's amazing, man. So we go to walk out, and that lady's getting her stuff at the counter. She's paying for all of her stuff, the lady that we just prayed for. And I said, you know, let's do something. Someone over, and I said, honey, I said, will you let me do this? She goes, what? I said, I need to get the stuff that you're getting today. She goes, no, no, no. No, I'm okay. I said, no, I need to. We, we would like to pay for your, for your dog stuff today that you're getting, because it was a whole bunch of stuff. She goes, why? I said, because God loves you, and he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. So now that I know him, I need to represent him the whole way. She's like, wow, okay, the whole way. Yeah, God's giving. God loves a cheerful giver. I'm in love, so I want to give. That's why I give. That's why Christians give. Shouldn't be like pulling teeth. I'm not talking about in here. I'm talking about out there. Bless somebody, man. Buy somebody a soda. Buy their dinner. Buy their lunch. Man, dare to tip. Change the culture of your country. Tip your people. They freak out. They don't even know what you're doing. Why are you doing this? Because Jesus loves you. Yeah, but why? Why are you giving me money? Because God loves you so much. I don't go out to eat unless I can tip the amount of my bill. You're like, whoa, what do we do? Don't go out to eat that much. <laughs> You'll change the culture of your country. If every Christian that confessed Christ would become radically generous, you would rock your whole country. So we pay for her, her stuff, and then we tell her where the church is. She goes, you know, I've been to that church before. She goes, my mother, my mother-in-law does catering, and I helped her cater the youth pastor's wedding. I went, no way, you know where it is? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, if I get the time, she goes, maybe we'll come. I said, cool. I said, man, it's so nice to meet you today. So that night at church, this lady shows up with her husband and her kid. And we're giving testimonies and asking people what happened today. And this lady that's petrified is up there with her new friend and her family. And they get up to the microphone. And this girl gets the microphone that's petrified, dude, scared. She goes, today, I was really afraid, but I'm not anymore. She goes, today, I went out with Todd, and he's not really that scary. It was cool. She goes, and, and what we did was we went to Defiance, and I didn't want to go there, and, but we went anyway, and then we went into a pet store, because I love animals. She goes, and then we met our friend. 
She goes, and I'm going to let my friend share. So she gives the, phone, the microphone to this girl, and this girl says, you know, today, she goes, I was in the pet store. She goes, and these people came up to me, and he knew I had a headache, and I know that God told him. She goes, but then my son, and they prayed for me, and my headache went completely away. She said, and I realized this is crazy that God comes into the store through people and meets me. She goes, but more than that, see, what you guys didn't know, Todd, she says, is that we're very low on finances. We don't have any money. And I thought, I need to get some things for my dog, but it's going to make us low even on groceries. She goes, so I don't have the money to do this. And then you come up and say that God, God wants you to pay for our, our stuff which gave my family grocery money because I knew it was impulsive and I shouldn't have been doing it, but God knew where I was. And he did that. He goes, she goes, so when I went home and gave this food and brought it home to my, to my, you know, to my house, the dog food and stuff, my husband was there and we talked to my husband, told him what happened and our whole family hit our knees and gave our life back to Jesus. No one led them there. God did. It's the intensity of love and the payment that he paid for you. And then the other girl gets the microphone. She goes, and I have something else to say, Todd. And I know it's not praise to me. She goes, the reason why I didn't want to go to Defiance is because I had a friend that had cancer. She goes, and every day, in order to get exercise, she lived in Defiance. We would go to that mall, and we would walk on the sidewalk, back and forth, back and forth. And we would say, God, don't you want to heal her? And he didn't know that healing was for today. She goes, and my friend died. And I got so mad at God. So mad at God. So we went back to the same mall that my friend and I used to walk. She goes, and I thank God that he showed me today who he really is. Because I don't have to be afraid anymore. So this is one testimony. And I have thousands of them that are similar. But guys, you don't have to be afraid. You don't. All it takes is one word. All it takes is this. Do you believe that you could at least say, hey, listen, God loves you so much. I just wanted to say hi to you. Do you think you could just do that much? Could you say that? This is why it's so important to know that God loves you. So that you could just display that each, everywhere you go. We can do this because we've become this. We can do this because we've become this. There is no pressure. It's not about one-upping people on testimonies. It's not about, well, you did that, well, I did this. No, no, no. It's about you stepping out further than you ever have before. And honestly, once you go past that line, there is no return. Once you go past that fake line that the devil puts there, because he puts an imaginary line there that says, if you step out past here, God ain't going to show up. So once you step out past there one time, you'll find out that it wasn't scary at all. And see, once you step a little further, a little further, a little further, before you know it, you're way past that one line that you've already stepped past. And all of a sudden, your heart starts to burn with relationship with God. And you're no longer concerned with what people think about you. Because you're in love with the King. And all of a sudden, it's not about what you have to do for Him. It's who you are because of the price that He paid for you.